Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna be checking out a Joe Bonamassa solo to see if he's really that good. Be checking out by Joe Bonamassa here is a live solo for a song called I'd Rather Go Blind. It's with uh, Beth Hart and Joe Bonamassa. And this is when we jump in here to his uh, solo section here. We're gonna start off, let's just give it a little listen, and then we'll kind of go in and we're gonna dive into some of the great things he's really doing in the solo that are not even that complicated that you can start introducing into your playing right away. So let's check it out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop it there. So as you kind of notice right off the rip, he's letting it breathe a lot, which is, it's he's kind of just feeling the vibe there, letting a lot of air between his phrases. Um, and that's a, a great tip right off the rip. Also, he's kind of creating, if you listen, it's almost like a, a slight slide sound coming up here in this next, not in this lick, coming up. Oh, just kind of almost a slide sound there. It just sounds so good. Um, so he's in uh, A major for this, and the progression, I'm pretty sure, is just an A chord to B minor. So it's a one-two progression. It's kind of like uh, Tennessee Whiskey's the same progression too. Um, and he's up here doing a lot of just A major pentatonic stuff. Let's go uh, to the very intro. We'll go kind of step by step what he's doing here. Okay, so his solo kind of starts um, over the A chord, but he, he actually just lets it breathe entirely for like quite a while. Comes in with this bend over here on the uh, B string. Uh, on the 12th fret B string. Uh, as it's moving to the B chord, okay? So it's, it's, it's on the A chord and he does that as it's moving to the B, like, since that's a B note, so he's hitting the root there. Um, but check out the what he's doing here. So he uses this pick. Oh, look, listen to the dynamics there. It's, he goes pick, and he goes really light with his finger. So two times really light, and then a little bit more aggressive with the finger there to end that off. Ooh. Okay, this is something I've seen throughout the solo too is he introduces, he uses his thumb and his middle finger. So the middle finger is a little bit more percussive, uh, more aggressive. His thumb's very soft, and he uses that to create very dynamic phrases. Like I said, it's A major pentatonic, so this kind of ends up being, uh, you could look at it as like position three of A major uh, pentatonic, or I look at everything like minor pentatonic wise, and that would be um, position four of like F sharp minor, uh, the relative minor of A major. Uh, they're both the same thing. So the shape there, kind of areas. So that's kind of the area we're at uh, for this solo. So that phrase, he's, he goes to the high E string 12th fret. Doing a, a little bend there, but he, then he does this little. Really is what he's walking down is A major pentatonic. The frets, so right here on the 12, and the walk down be, the first finger will be nine, seven, five to two. Then he goes B string uh, and five, seven. And then, and then G string, six, which is the major third of the A chord, slides back two frets uh, to the fourth fret, and then ends to the root here on the uh, D string. Uh, but the way he's doing that is so, like import it. I'm not gonna be able to nail it perfectly. It's gonna. It it takes a lot of practice to get this touch. But what he's doing is just. 
So he's doing this. It's almost like a, sl it's like with the vibrato, you're almost pushing the note up a fraction. So it's not like, like emotionless. It's slightly. So in, on the way down on the high E, he's using his middle finger, which is a little, he tends to be a little bit more aggressive with. And he ends soft with the thumb. Right? So that's kind of what he's doing there. I think that's a great uh, lick. Also, we'll get into it. He actually gives a callback to this uh, lick later on. So I think he really likes this lick. And this next uh, run he's about to do, he does a callback to later on the solo. So he's going. Notice here, he's going really soft. Almost when I first saw this, I was like, did he change pickup selectors? Because it had such a warm tone compared to over here. Here, I'll, let me turn this up a little bit. Here, I'll, it just gets a little warmer there. And that's because that thumb. He, he throws in at the very end here that any accents, it's all dynamic here. After this run, watch. That, he plucks out a little bit to get it to stand out a little bit more in the mix. That's the root note of A as well. So what he's doing is, uh, just some A major pentatonic run here, but he's going uh, seven, nine on the A, seven, nine on the D, and then uh, he, he goes 11 on the D, so, but he's kind of transitioning to this triad shape. A triad, so he's not continuing the whole pentatonic. He's going. This is a little A triad, so he's going. So that's a uh, 11 on the D, nine on the G, and then he plucks that B string uh, root note on the D there. So you know this kind of combines so far. He's got. So we'll see what he kind of does there after that. Oh my gosh, that's very slide, like very slidey sounding. Oh my gosh. And it's just right there on the uh, 10, 12 on the B there, which is, that's the root note. That would be the second, the B note. So, you know, you got the intro kind of. Just some other things. Dude, that was so beautiful. Did you guys hear that? That was just perfect. Letting it breathe right there for the perfect amount of time. Just, he does a beautiful phrase right here. Fixes his glasses. Perfect. All right, let's listen to this next. So keep that in mind. When you're soloing, feel completely comfortable Letting it breathe for a second. It's all right. He lets it breathe for a long time right there. Uh, and it's just, it just, it sounds beautiful when you do that. It's this little thing, like a little flutter, like hammer on pull off on the high E. And then I think he's doing hammer on from nowhere on the, uh, 12 of the B and then 11 on the G. A little pause. He likes to do that when it goes to the, the two chord. He goes. He's just outlining the root note of that chord change. Oh, just sounds amazing, this solo. That's some interesting stuff there.
Is he going to the G or the G sharp? See what he's, he's... I think what he's doing is he might be going to the G, so he's doing a whole step. On the high E 12th fret. And does a little bit... So a little bit more there to reach that G note, which would be a flat seven. Yeah, and it's almost creating what you would call a mixolydian kind of sound, like an A mixolydian, because uh, that's the flat seven there. This is what I was talking about too. This is the callback to that uh, little lick we did early on. We went. Ration, watch what he does. He do the same lick after. Watch. Does a very. Almost the same identical riff, calling back to the very early part of the solo. Um, I like that too. So we're right here, and uh, so that's the root. Keep in mind, this is the root, the A note here. So he did the, a classical blues riff, grabbing that five up there. On the 12th fret high E. Five, I mean, it's the fifth note of the scale. It's an E note. Going back to that. Oh, we jumped up. To uh, position one up here of the major, uh, or, well, minor pentaton. I guess this would be position five. I don't know. I refer everything to minor. I'm thinking kind of position one of the minor here, which would be the typical pentatonic. That's where he's kind of jumping here. He threw an extra note in though, so a little bit major scale. Where did he go down to? Oh, he did a little... Something like that. Something like that. Ooh. Right, so now we're just... He's on that 17th fret doing... On the B string, whole step down. Jump into the high E after that. That's a great little phrase. This is so like Almond Brothers sounding. Okay, now he's up there what I'd call position two. Which is a very, he, well, he's doing similar phrases because of a similar shape on the guitar. <laughs> uh, he was doing down here, that's an A to a B note. He's up here, A to B. He's doing similar phrases, they're similar notes. Also, keep in mind, you're gonna start noticing uh, a couple things here, dynamics wise with the solo. He started off, a lot of pauses, a lot of breaks. Uh, mellow, being very careful with the dynamics if he's gonna pick it, uh, pick the note loudly or finger pick it very lightly. Um, and then now you're going to start noticing a little bit less pauses in between each phrase. He's moved up the register of the guitar. He's probably, I think he's turned the volume knob up, uh, knob up a little bit too to get a little bit more distortion out because that's a lot, a lot of these guys run into a great amp like that. It's all in the volume knob, what he's altering there. He might be start picking more notes now because picking's going to make it louder. You'll also notice, this is like, uh, you can do all these great things and it wouldn't sound as good. This band behind him is amazing. They start adding so much energy to the song. They started off super laid back, letting him do his thing. And now they're going to be building it up and making this solo just come to life. So check this out. You guys know Joe Bonamassa can literally just sit here and shred up and down scales to build up intensity and show off. He does, he's not doing that right now. He's literally just like on the, uh, like on the high E 19th fret, just bending. Just 
just kind of having at it, building tons of intensity. There's no nothing technical uh, about like speed and scales and all that. I'm telling you, it's just mainly 99% of it is pentatonic, A major pentatonic. There's no technical p alternate picking and all this crazy stuff. He's just being careful with uh, placement of the notes. He's being careful with how he touches the notes, like finger style or with the pick, if he's rolling the knob up or not. Just, it's amazing stuff. <laughs> So what he did there, so this is an A major, right? So he actually, just to kind of change up the sound, he uh, grabbed the minor third, which is not typically there, and just did a, just a little bend there. I think, just a nice little bend there. And he goes right back to what he was doing before. A lot of this sound that he's doing right now is in the vibrato, and it's, it's a very like, I'm trying to get it down myself. It's it's not the easiest thing in the world. Just in that vibrato. Get the band in there, building it up. Get the horns coming in. What is he doing there? He does that phrase multiple times there, building up. Right, this is just normal like position two pentatonic stuff. Which would be a... Uh... He's just bending it, adding uh, some good vibrato and just doing it over and over again it sounds awesome into the solo so dude, just amazing stuff in this solo and uh i thought it'd be interesting because it's not like a very shreddy solo uh, i know a lot of guys you know think of joe bonamassa they think about the fast pentatonic stuff that he does which is amazing but this song this solo is literally straight up amazing phrases and uh control of the solo letting it breathe using dynamics to bring out uh like you know make some notes fall back make some notes jump out um and then building up the intensity. Now, obviously, he's playing with a great band that's helping. I promise it helps out a lot. If you turn on some random backing track to try this the same concept, the solo will sound really, really good following kind of his formula, taking some of these licks maybe. But at the end of the day, the band is there really right there alongside bringing that intensity up. Intensity up that is transforming the solo to make it uh, just even better. Uh, and you can't do that without a band that's doing that. You know, starting off light, and they know when to build up properly. Um, but that doesn't take away from his phrasing. He starts off very mellow, a lot of breaths in the solo, letting time just go, letting the chord, the rhythm section do their thing, and then he comes back with another phrase. And as you notice, later on, he builds up, he moves up higher on the guitar. He gets a little bit more distortion, he starts using the pick more, uh, and he's up here just ripping, and there's a lot, he lets the space, there's less space in between each phrase. He just keeps on going, there's very little uh, space. A lot of people come into solos right off the great gate just playing non-stop. They don't even take a break ever. Um, and then they start running out of ideas and all this stuff. And that's why. It's because you came out the gate. You need to take it a little slower. Find little motifs that you do. Little. You've noticed he does a lot of repetitive riffs that sound cool. Little licks. And he does them a couple times. And he starts building upon them. Uh, that's a great tactic. So, hope you guys enjoyed this new style video. I plan to do a lot more. Um, I want to get better with the video quality too. But uh, I hope this was informative and you learned a lot. Uh, and I'll see you guys uh, next time.